Hi there, it's Mimsy here. Today I'm going to show you how to string a Roman shade. I'm standing here in my bedroom in front of a Roman shade that I made a couple years ago and I used cording that was not intended for a Roman shade. So all of my cording broke. This is what I'm left with. A Roman shade that has one lift cord left. So it obviously needs to be repaired. I am going to take this Roman shade shade down, take it to my workroom, and show you how to properly string a Roman shade easy way. So let's get started. Here we are in my workroom. I've got the Roman shade laid out on my table. There's a couple of reasons why this Roman shade failed. Number one is because I used the wrong lift cord. This is something that I picked up. I don't remember where. I got a huge roll of it and I thought, oh good, this will be great. Um, cheap lift cord. Well, it clearly did not work. It frayed and broke. The second reason is, is because I used eye hooks in the top of my shade that are not intended for Roman shade use. They're not round enough and let me show you how they look. Those are the little eye hook. They're a little bit sharp. So let me show you the tools that you should be using. Okay, so here's Roman shade rings. These were purchased either from Joann's or, or even Amazon. I will put a link to these in the description box below so you can order them. They do come in two different sizes. You can use this three quarter inch ring or you can use a half inch ring. It doesn't really make much of a difference. Then you you will need to have these little screw eyes basically so you just screw those into your top piece of wood I'll link to those as well and then of course the most important thing is your Roman shade lift cord this is a nylon cord that's tightly woven and it's intended for Roman shades so definitely get this I'll put a link in the description box below to this as well you can also get it on um, at Joann fabrics and even at Walmart in the store I believe they sell the lift cord so that's pretty much all you need for a Roman shade shade. There's one other item over here I'll show you that I used on mine, which is helpful. This piece here is the last piece that I'll show you that's a nice thing to have. You string all your cords down to one side or the other, which whichever side you want to lift your Roman shade from, whichever is most easily accessible in your room. And then you can put one of these on there and that allows all your cords to come over this little rounded thing that spins and just makes lifting your cords even easier than using an eye hook. An eye hook is just fine or an eye screw is just fine. This will even prolong the life of your strings and make raising and lowering your Roman shade even easier. And then this here is the L bracket. If you want to mount this outside mount, your screw would go through here and into your wall. I am not going to do that. I think I was originally intending to and that's why I put it there but I am not going to do that. I actually just put a screw right through this piece of wood and into the inside of my window. So to give you an overview here's my entire shade. My window is quite wide. I believe it's 70. I think my window is 72 inches and then the height is I think about four feet. It's a large window. The rule of thumb for spacing your rings vertically is between 8 and 12 inches and then spacing your rings horizontally from one to the other you want to go between 12 and 24 inches max so the closer that you Space your rings horizontally this way the more straight your Roman shade will raise and lower if your spaces are really far apart you're gonna get a little bit of draping in between so you're gonna your Roman shade will smile in between those rings your first row of rings on the edge of your Roman shade should be no more than two inches from the edge you don't want to put your ring right on the edge of your shade because because you'll see it 
it'll show. So I like to put my ring right on the edge of my seam so that it's about an inch and a half in. So your ring spacing should be vertically, your ring spacing should be between eight and 12 inches. And then horizontally across your shade, your ring spacing should be between 12 and 24 inches. You don't really want to go wider than 24 inches horizontally otherwise your shade will have a relaxed feel and you'll get smiles between your rings which is fine if that's what you want is a relaxed Roman shade like the one I did in my guest bathroom and that's just fine but if you want your shade to be very straight as you lift and lower your shade then you would want to have a smaller space between your rings horizontally so you're gonna start Let's say you're spacing like I did here between, my space here is 10 inches. You're gonna start your first ring from the bottom of your shade at five inches. And then from there, you're gonna go every 10 inches. And the reason for that is because when you raise your shade up, your lift cord is gonna go through the rings. And when you lift it, it'll pull the ring up to each other and the folds that it creates is gonna be five inches deep. So therefore this last, this bottom part will be a five inch fold here. So that's why you do that first ring space half of whatever the rest of your spacing is gonna be. Does that make sense? So if your spacing is 10 inches, you're gonna start your first ring five inches from the bottom of your shade or five inches from the, the top of your hem if you want to have a little bit of a tongue on the bottom of your shade. So let's say you're gonna have um, a decorative trim at the bottom of your shade and you want that to show, then you're gonna start that very first ring at the top of your hem and then go five inches for the next ring and then 10 inches every ring beyond that. So that's the rule of thumb for spacing vertically and horizontally. And then once you get your rings all sewn on, so you'll put your eye hook at the top of that run of rings. So every run of rings that you have, you'll have an eye hook into that piece of wood at the top. Okay, so I've got to sew on a few more rings and disregard this lining here. I did not have enough blackout lining to make it to the bottom of my shade, which is ridiculous. I'm always skimping on my own, everything for my own house. So I didn't even go to the bottom. It's ridiculous, but I'm gonna now find a piece of blackout and add to this so that I'll have blackout all the way to the bottom. And then I'm gonna sew on my rings and I'll show you how to sew the rings on. So once you've determined your spacing, you can measure it out and mark. I do a little pencil crosshairs mark and then you, you start sewing your rings on. And I like to double up my thread. That way I don't have to do so many stitches. You really only need to do two or maybe three stitches if you're using a good heavyweight upholstery thread or button thread, you're going to just hold the ring on the crosshairs that you marked, put your needle through that, and you're only gonna do two or three stitches. And you want to use a thread that matches your face fabric or your decorator fabric so that it disappears on the front side of your shade. However, the thread is really only gonna show when your shade is closed or all the way down. That's the only time that you're gonna see thread because when you raise your Roman shade, the thread on the front or the face fabric is gonna be in the fold, so you won't see that. And another fast way to attach your rings is to actually tie them on. So if you've got a Tex 70 or stronger upholstery thread, and I'll put a link to the 
Tech 70 upholstery thread, which is great for making Roman shades. Just double up your thread, grab your ring, and we're going to just put basically stitch one stitch and then just tie it off. And we'll double knot it to make sure that that ring is sufficiently tied on and trim that. And that is very sufficient. I mean, if you're just using regular cotton thread, then you might need to do four or five stitches around each one, but it'll take you forever. So just go ahead and get some good heavy upholster or thread to tie on your rings because the rings are really the part that takes the longest on making a Roman shade. Okay, so I've got all my rings sewn on or tied on. Now you're gonna install your eye hooks right in line with each row of rings. So you've gotta have an eye hook at the top of every single vertical row of rings. And generally this board, you would cover it with your lining fabric. You'll be able to see that on the outside of your window. So you generally wanna have your board covered in just a white fabric. Okay, and since I already have the holes from the previous eye hooks I can just put these right into the holes that I had already made so one thing about your header wood as you can see here I just used a one by two because that's what I had on hand normally you would use a one by four, either will work. So I'm gonna start down here with the first row because it's the farthest away from that pulley. All of the strings are gonna go. So this first one will go through, I'll tie to this bottom one. It'll go all the way up through all those rings into that eye hook, through every single eye hook across the top into that pulley and it'll hang down this side so that I can grab that and pull. Then the next row will be tied to this very first ring. It'll go up through every, string it through every ring, through that eye hook over to that eye hook, that eye hook and through every eye hook through that pulley and then it'll hang down to that side. So we'll do the same thing on every row I'm gonna run this up and measure so I can cut my string. Through the top eye hook, right above all my rings, through the next eye hook, and so forth. Okay, that's two. Okay, so there it is strung up, the bottom is tied, and then the string goes through each ring, up into the eye screw, and over into the next one, and into the next one. And all of them are strung up the same way. All of them leading over to the one side through the little pulley and now down 